Dragon's Dogma 2 is one of the strangest games of 2024. This open world RPG is packed with weird features that make it extremely hostile to players, throwing you straight into a dangerous fantasy land and barely explaining some of its core features. There are so many strange details in this game and we want to talk about them all. Here's everything crazy we've discovered so far that you didn't know that you could do and we didn't know either until we played the game way too much. At the start of the game, you will meet Rook. This is the first pawn on your journey and he'll help you escape the pits of the excavation site. On your way to the starting town of Melv, Rook will die in a cutscene. But as we all know, pawns don't stay dead. You can actually reacquire this early helper much later in the game at the Riftstone outside of Dragonforge Shrine. This unique Riftstone gives you access to all the pawns you've previously summoned and Rook does count. Not only that, there are more unique Riftstones. The one in Half Village only summons pawns that are the solution to a tricky riddle. There are many more unique pawns to find but we will have to keep searching but a reunion with Rook was one secret we never expected. Early in the game, Captain Brandt will send you on a main story quest to free an imprisoned magistrate. He will give you a special item called the Jail Key, which you can use to access the dungeon in Vernroth Castle. This key unlocks every door in the jail, but it unlocks way more than that. The Jail Key also opens all the doors in Batal Jail. It even works on other castles with locked cell doors, like the Submerged Castle. The key works everywhere and you can copy it at Ibrahim's shop at Checkpoint Rest Town. Make a forgery of the jail key while completing the caged magistrate quest and you'll be able to keep the copy permanently for all of your prison escape needs. This. If you think me a liar, then buy something and see the truth for yourself. He has another fun little detail we only just noticed. If you capture a villain and get them arrested during the events of a quest, that character will appear in the local jail. You can break in and even talk to them and they'll have unique dialogue and can even reveal hints for future quests. One of the earliest NPCs you can arrest is Elena at the Gracious Hands. If you get all the evidence to arrest her for experimenting on the slums, you'll find her cooling her heels in the dungeon. There are many in this world who require salvation. I merely borrowed the aid of those who could offer it. She can also be used to get clues for later quests. Another NPC is the would-be assassin of the Empress in Batal. If you capture the assassin before he strikes, you can pay him a visit in the dungeons to learn more about who hired him and why. There are more interactions just like this and they're all worth checking out for inquisitive players. Giant monsters aren't just big creatures that you hunt, you can also use them to fly to faraway places or cross busted bridges. The giant flying griffins are perfect for this. Mid battle they'll usually fly back to their nests. Instead of chasing them down, you can grab onto their backs and ride them. You'll definitely want to bring stamina healing items or you can be thrown off from a hundred yards up and you will not survive that fall. The griffin nests are also packed with items to take so they are definitely worth tracking down. And even more rarely, you can knock over a clumsy cyclops to create a bridge. Knocking over the cyclops near a crevasse that's just about their size causes them to grab both sides and then balance. You can walk across or attack them to drop them into the briny deep below. You likely already know that the giant ballista in towers can be used to shut down griffins and even dragons, but you might not know about catapults. Old catapults are located near the ancient battleground and they're actually usable. If you pick up boulders and place them in the catapult sling, they'll launch and smash giant rock barriers. This is the only way to break through rock barriers, so look for these tools often. And if you didn't know about the giant ballista, you need to wait for your punch to help you. The giant ballista can only function if three characters are using it at the same time. There are two extra cranks your pawns can take control of while you're aiming.
sometimes you'll get quests to escort NPCs to far locations on the map. These escort quests are really only for earning friendship points, so you can safely skip them, but sometimes you'll get real quests where escorting an NPC gets tough. Helping an NPC escape from jail or trying to avoid a monster attack can be particularly challenging. If you want to skip all of that, you can just portal while carrying an NPC. When you grab an NPC and throw them over your shoulder, you can still use fairy stones. This is crucially important knowledge for solving Sphinx riddles. We had no idea, but NPCs will teleport along with you as long as you're carrying them on your shoulder. One of the weirdest secrets in Batal requires a Bistrin. One of the rarest items in the game is Newt Liqueur, an illegal commodity you can only get from a secret seller in the capital of Batal. Even carrying this stuff around can get you attacked by guards and the best way to find more is in the black market. To access the black market, you need to be a Bistrin. Luckily, there is a way to disguise yourself. Ibrahim Scrap Store in Checkpoint Rest Town sells a mask that will perfectly disguise you. Next, go to Higgs Tavern Stand in the residential quarter. Outside the tavern, look for bales to the left near a wooden enclosure. Pick up a bundle and place it in the enclosure. The lookout will then take you to the Newt Liqueur vendor. Don't take off your mask when buying or the place will get raided by Batal guards and you will get stuck in jail. The Medusa is a unique monster that spawns in the south of Batal. You'll only find her in a spooky ruin in the grassy jungle area to the west when travelling through the southern canyon. Her cave is even marked by stone statues. And true to her legend, the Medusa can petrify you with a stare. Actually getting your hands on a good head is the tricky part. Simply killing the Medusa will drop a poor quality head that will turn to dust almost immediately. To get a pristine Medusa head that can petrify enemies, you will need to stun the Medusa by attacking her head only. Once she's on the ground, you can perform a special insta-kill that severs her head instantly. If she has two or more health bars left, you will earn the best quality head. Equip the head like a lantern and brandish it to petrify literally anything in the game. Our favourite secret that we've found so far is the Daughter of the Evening Shield. By raiding the vault underneath Vernworth Castle, you can acquire a unique mirrored shield. This shield has the power to reflect the petrifying stare of the Medusa right back at her, turning her to stone in a few seconds. Not only that, turning her to stone unlocks the eye for an eye trophy. We just love ironic defeats that are pulled straight out of Clash of the Titans. To get the shield, you'll need to raid the ruined castle at the abandoned battleground to the east of Checkpoint Rest Town. Deep inside the castle, you'll find a chest that contains the vault key. You'll then find the Vernworth Castle vault down the hall from the dining room. It's easy to miss, but well worth finding, and it's packed with even more treasure you don't want to miss out on. After completing your first run of the story, you can restart with all of your gear and your level intact. You can import your previous characters and get started much faster. While almost everything is exactly the same on your second run, there is a major difference and it's located at the Bay Wayside Shrine. The Dragon Forged on the coast north of Back Batal has a bunch of new upgrades for players to use. By spending Worm's Life Crystals, you can now select new boons to earn more experience, bond with characters faster, or level up your vocations. You can also reset enhancements on equipment, improve vocations and improve skills. When a skill is improved, it costs half the stamina to use in combat, but only one skill can be improved at a time. All of these upgrades make maxing out your character completely so much easier. We had no idea there were any new features in New Game Plus, so this was a big surprise. And that's 10 little secrets that are ridiculously easy to miss. We're sure there are many, many more tiny details still left to be discovered and we'll be back with even more in the future. Here's to another 100 hours of digging deep into Dragon's Dogma 2.